it's little over a year ago that we were barely at the beginning of our understanding of the no novel coronavirus. And it's just so incredible that we've gone from that limited understanding to vaccine rollout in such a short period of time. So then congratulations on that achievement. And I thought that in order to fully appreciate this remarkable feat, perhaps you can begin by giving us a little insight into the complexity of the vaccine development process. Many thanks for that kind introduction. And first of all, my thanks to the Science and Business Network Conference for inviting me here today to have this discussion among such an esteemed group of international experts. Uh, my name is Sinan Atlik, and I'm the regional president of Pfizer Vaccines and in International Developed Markets, which also includes Europe. And during my career, I have been privileged to live and work within many different countries and cultures. And this global perspective is central to the way I and my colleagues at Pfizer see the world. And that international outlook has never been more relevant or valuable than right now. In March of 2020, if we go back uh, one year before, less than a week after WHO declared COVID-19 as a global pandemic, Pfizer announced our collaboration with BioNTech on the development of potential mRNA-based coronavirus vaccine. And from the outset, we knew that we would be trying to achieve something seemingly impossible, developing a safe and effective COVID-19 vaccine in a record-breaking timeframe. And as our CEO, Albert Burla, memorably said, if not us, then who? As a community of scientists, healthcare experts, and business leaders, we knew that only with global collaboration and mutual cooperation beyond borders would we be able to help solve this unprecedented crisis that COVID-19 represents. We moved quickly to outline a five-point plan to address the pandemic, calling on our partners in the innovation ecosystem to join us. We committed to working together with our peers to harness our scientific expertise, technical skills, and manufacturing capabilities so that we, we could rapidly bring forward multiple solutions to help protect the world from COVID-19. That same desire to urgently address the public health need drove us to re-examine our standard timelines for the vaccine development process and challenge ourselves to find opportunities to do things differently. In the face of this global challenge, we went all in, not knowing if we would be even successful. As just one example, together with BioNTech, we came into the development process, starting with four investigational vaccine candidates. In the past, in normal times, we would have tested these sequentially to determine which one to take forward. But this time, we tested all four of them in parallel, thereby enabling us to move much faster to the next phase, but without compromising one inch on safety or quality. So after just nine months, Rather than the industry norm of 10 years, we had an approved vaccine in Europe following a positive phase three trial data showing our vaccine's efficacy in preventing COVID-19. And this offered a tremendous moment of hope, not just for us, but for the entire world. And that news came when we needed the most with infection rates around the world reaching new highs and hospitals nearing capacity. Let me also say something about our manufacturing process, which has been driven by expertise, confidence, and speed. Throughout our phase three trial, we were also testing our manufacturing and supply chain process as we delivered our vaccine to clinical trial sites around the world. We developed packaging and storage innovations, which are fit for purpose for the needs of our global network and designed for the rapid scale up once regulatory approval was granted. This meant that vaccination could also begin in Europe immediately as we had already commenced manufacturing at risk. Our distribution is built on a flexible just-in-time system that can ship the frozen vials quickly to designated points of vaccination at the time of need, minimizing the need for long-term storage anywhere. And we must comment too, not only us as industry, but also the willingness of global regulators to respond with speed and urgency to our data in real time to help keep our trials running as quickly as possible. We also recognize the importance of their independence and upholding scientific rigor. Partnering together with them, we were able to significantly accelerate the development timeline. 
so that moving from regulatory approval for phase 2b slash 3 to the first subject first visit took only two hours and we went from first subject first visit to over 20,000 people dosed within just 35 days so 20 people dosed within just 35 days and altogether this journey has shown us that innovation can thrive even during times of crisis and that we are capable of moving at incredible speed without compromising an inch on quality or safety. That really is an incredible story. And um, I think reflecting on this last year then, what do you believe are the key success factors that have enabled this to happen? Uh, so first of all, we drew heavily on our 130 years of experience of developing vaccines to help prevent serious life-threatening infections and diseases when we set up and conducted clinical trials for our candidate vaccine. This involved enrolling more than 40,000 participants in record time and in nine countries. And at Pfizer, we made a commitment to design clinical trials so that enrollment can reflect the racial and ethnic diversity of the countries where we conduct clinical trials and, in, and the epidemiology of the diseases we intend to treat or prevent. This is important as evidence continues to show that some racial and ma ethnic minority groups have been disproportionately affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Because of our commitment to ensure trial enrollment uh, accurately reflects the epidemiology of the disease, 42% uh, of global port participants in our vaccine trials had racially and ethnically diverse backgrounds, and 41% of global participants were from the age 56 to 85, who are at most risk of severe disease. In addition, the trial will continue to collect efficacy and safety data in participants for an additional two years at approximately 150 clinical trial sites in US, Germany, Turkey, South Africa, Brazil, and Argentina. We were also very rigorous in identifying areas for parallel processing in our clinical trials, as well as digitizing many elements of the patient experience. And I also mentioned manufacturing. Manufacturing is a key part of that success. And it requires specialized capabilities, which were not commonly available when we needed to start manufacturing. So speed was of utmost importance, and we utilize our internal sites where specific capabilities of the vaccine could be rapidly repurposed or constructed as required. The majority of our manufacturing sites are in Germany, Belgium, Ireland, and in the United States, where our manufacturing is centered. And importantly, we also committed to work as one team across the industry to harness our scientific expertise, our technical skills and our manufacturing capabilities. As you will have likely seen, both Novartis, Sanofi and Delpharm have recently signed agreements committing to provide manufacturing capacity for our vaccine in order to support the global pandemic response. And it also has been a two-way street. So we also announced as Pfizer a multi-year agreement with Gilead Sciences last August to manufacture and supply their antiviral remdesivir. From the beginning, it's been clear that no one company or innovation would be able to bring this end to the pandemic. And I'm really, really proud of how our industry's willingness to work together in this crisis together. That's really great to see that amount of collaboration globally. It's, it's very heartening to see that. What about so the lessons learned for public-private partnerships in terms of R&D collaboration with, you know, working with, with BioNTech. How, how, what are the lessons learned there? Uh, the global collaboration across all healthcare stakeholders, both in private and public, has a huge and will play a continuing role in the age of COVID-19. The public interest in vaccination and the role it plays in public health has never been higher. So looking back at what we have learned in the past year, we have seen that strengthening health infrastructure and improving access to innovative medicines and vaccines is key to support long-term public health. Specifically, this pandemic has shown us the importance of life course vaccination for adults and governments will need a robust system in place that not only invests in vaccine development, 
but also enables delivery and access to vaccinations for people of all ages. We know that disruption of immunization services, even for brief periods, will result in increased numbers of susceptible individuals and raise the likelihood of outbreak-prone vaccine preventable diseases such as measles. This is why guidance issued by WHO specifies that immunization services are essential component of health services and should be maintained as long as pandemic response measures allow. Vaccination is an important step in protecting adults against serious and sometimes deadly diseases. And as mentioned, a light has been shown on the need of establishing effective health policies that specifically focuses on the aging population and infrastructure that enables robust delivery and access to vaccination for people of all ages. Looking forward, one such example is to expanding pharmacists as vaccinators. Pharmacists have for years have been underutilized community health resource in many countries, and they today stand ready to take on vaccination to help protect their local communities against vaccine preventable diseases. So together with governments and NGOs, we can help adult recommended vaccines be as successfully adopted as childhood vaccines, and this will have a significant impact improving global public health for all ages. Thank you, Sinan. I'm, honestly, I feel like I could talk to you all day about this, um, but sadly, we've run out of time. So I just want to say thank you for giving this um, very, very brief, um, quick snapshot of all your achievements. You've condensed almost, you know, over a year's work into 15 minutes. So uh, that in itself is a remarkable achievement. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us. Um, and uh, yeah, it was well, lovely to have you here.